welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheaton, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day. Bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Hello, Make Life Fun. Welcome back to the show. I am so happy that you're here. I have Monique Caradine Kitchens on the Make Life Fun show with us today. And she is going to be talking to us money, abundance, and how we can write a better money story for ourselves. It's an inner money game today. So welcome, Monique. Thank you for being here. So excited to have this conversation with you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's just jump right in. Tell me what is lighting you up right now, especially in the money space and the abundance space mom life (laughs) man so much is lighting me up right now i we could talk all day just about that but a couple things i'll point out i am a mom of a 19 year old who is a college student and he is arriving in college do you hear me he is doing so good and i'm so proud of him and he i'm just literally from afar because he's in boston i'm in the atlanta area And I'm just watching him blossom and turn into this amazing young adult. And it just brings me so much joy on the inside. So that's one thing I'm celebrating. So in this empty nest mom life space that I'm in, I'm really digging my heels into work again. Like I'm, my work is my joy. It lights me up. I do work that I love. So I'm one of those ladies that could work a lot of hours because (laughs) that's just how much I love my work. And so work has really got me on fire lately that my clients, the, the, the content that I'm creating, mm-hmm. discovering all these new tools that allow me to be more productive and more visible and, and just more joyful and more mm-hmm. peaceful and having more space in my life and my day. I'm having a blast. Yes, it sounds like it because as you're speaking, I'm like, yes to all of that. Because <laughs> when you are having so much fun in your work and it doesn't feel like work and that's how you can do all these hours because it feels like play to you. So I would yeah. love for you to tell us a little bit, how did you get to that place where instead of it feeling like grinding, instead of it feeling like forcing, it sounds like you're leaning back into more of an alignment. Oh, that's such a juicy question. And two things come up for me as answers for me. One of my answers to that would be just being in this space of embracing my wisdom as I guess what some might call a mature woman. I don't know if I really like that too much. I might have to rename that, but you get what I'm saying. Like at this stage in life as an empty nester and being, you know, of a certain age, it's just a wisdom that you just... I don't know if you gain it or embrace it or what, but it just comes up on you. So for all you 30 something moms, if you're not feeling that yet, it will come, trust me. And I'm just leaning into what I call my queen space, my queendom. I'm owning my queendom because that's what I believe that I am at this stage in life. And as a queen who knows her worth and who knows her value, we don't have to hustle and grind if we don't want to. When we do want to, we can, but I also, am okay and I have given myself permission to create and honor my own boundaries. Mm. I've given myself permission at this stage in life to ask for what I want. And I've given myself permission to make known when something is happening that I don't want. I'm just more confident in that. Whereas before, when I was probably younger, I I wasn't as confident in that space. So that's very important. I'm glad you asked that. But the other thing that has me in this space is I have an amazing coach. 
And I believe that every winner has a coach. And last year, it was probably last year around this time when I was in a real state and a season of upheaval in life, lots of transitions. I told you my son is in college. We moved from Puerto Rico back to the mainland. Just a lot of moving pieces in life. There's a lot going on. And I felt a little unsettled. And I had a conversation one day with my coach and she said, what would happen if you open yourself to a allowing. She said, what would happen if you embrace that you've paid all the dues, you've done all the things, you've learned the lessons, you've bounced back, you've proven yourself time and time again. She said, what would happen if you just allowed and recognize that you don't have to make anything happen, that it's waiting to happen for you. It's waiting to come to you. All the things that you desire, all these dreams that I have, they're just waiting for me to say, okay, here I am. I'm ready. Come on. And I was like, dang, you know, you think that in the back of your head, but to have someone to bring it forward, to help you bring it forward was a huge breakthrough for me. So since then, I have allowed myself to be in the space of allowing. So allow yourself to allow. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that with us because your breakthrough is not going to be somebody else's aha. There it is. <laughs> exactly. And I love how you talk about the queendom. Like I can step into my fullness of my queendom. And a lot of my listeners, since the topic we talk about is about self-acceptance and worthiness, aren't necessarily feeling that. So they need these conversations to start to feel that they are worthy of the abundance. They are worthy of asking for what they want, worthy of setting boundaries, even if they're going to ruffle some feathers, right? Exactly. And so exactly. I feel like you're the perfect woman to ask this question of how can we start to the innate worth that is already in here. Like we didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to beg or plead for it. Like we came into this world with it, but there's so much of a remembering that comes with that. Like we forget. Yeah. The reason I love that is because you're opening up a door and having someone to open up a door, just imagine yourself going to, I don't know, the grocery store, the coffee shop, and maybe you're taking your computer and your stuff in the coffee shop to do some work and you've got your arms all full. And as you approach the door are you like oh my goodness it sure would be nice if somebody opened up this door for me so I wouldn't have and then along comes somebody who opens the door for you and just makes it easier for you to just walk through that gateway you are opening up a door and I appreciate that and I value that so I honor you for that And that's what we all need. We all need that someone that's going to open up a door. So to answer your question, you know, for the women who may not be feeling that queendom, who may not quite know how to grab a hold of that, I I think that it's important to have someone in your life. It could be a mentor. It could be an accountability partner. It could be someone that you consider a, a wise sage or just an older mother, aunt figure, someone in your life who doesn't mind taking the time to sit down with us. I just am so grateful for my mother and my aunts who throughout my entire life have been there, you know, leading and guiding the way, if nothing else, just by the example of their own lives. And so we have to honor and understand that there are so many people out here with a level of wisdom that we have not yet experienced, for lack of a better word. And we have to give ourselves permission once again to seek them out. Maybe it is a mom or an aunt or grandmother. We have to be willing to sit at the feet of the people who have been there, done that, if you will, who have done the things that we desire to do, who have gone through a a few things and they got the the t-shirt to prove it, if you will. You know, I hope that one of the things that people will walk away from this conversation is that it's okay to ask for help and guidance and wise counsel because we all need it. Yes. And that's a beautiful, like, oh, put that out there, put it on a piece of Put it on a shirt, as you would say, because asking for help is one of the things when you become a mom, you're like, I'm supposed to be the superwoman. I'm supposed to have it all together. I'm supposed, 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 should, should. <laughs> and we don't remember that. Oh my gosh, we get to ask for help. We get to be supported yes. and fully supported. And I feel like there's something that worthy, that worthiness, that receiving peace and asking for support, they kind of go hand in hand. Worthiness and receiving. Oh, you're coming up with some good stuff here. You're making me think out loud, like on the spot. You're keeping me on my toes. I like it. Yes. So yes, I agree 100%. When you understand your worth, then you become more aware of the fact that asking for help is a superpower, right? As opposed to what the world teaches us, that we're supposed to wear that superwoman cape. We're supposed to fly through the sky, you know, and do all the things and work from sun up to sun down. But I think we're in a season where we have to do it differently. 
And we have to say the real superpower is being vulnerable and being willing to say, I need help. I need a village. This whole motherhood thing is something I can't do by myself. And if I need a nanny, I'm going to get a nanny. If I need a housekeeper, I'm going to get a housekeeper. If I need someone to help prepare meals, I'm going to do that. See, I came up in that generation where I saw my mom and, and grandmother do everything. There was no nannies, no housekeepers, none of that. And if I could go back and do it all over again, then I would do just that. Ask for help and get all the help that I need. Because when we get help, ladies, it frees us up to become who we are meant to be. Better moms, if we're working moms, and now we can do our work more effectively and efficiently. It just better partners to our spouses or our, our mates. Getting help is like, it's a gift from God. Like... <laughs> Truly. Ask for help when you need it. I encourage you. That is your true superpower. It's not going to bed exhausted every night because you've done all the things. Getting your help is your true superpower. Yes, absolutely. And I love that you we we're talking about the self-worth piece because now we're going to move into money, which is your, <laughs> your, your secret sauce, your thing that you love to talk about, right? Money and abundance and wealth. One of the questions you like to answer is why your inner circle is important when you're focused into money and wealth and abundance, why you need that crowd around you that's going to support that. Yeah, it's so important. There are a lot of reasons why your inner circle is important, but one of the things that I feel like I want to mention here on this platform is that, you know, as an African-American woman, my experience growing up was one where I heard my family members talk a lot about having to rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't know if you ever heard that growing oh, up yeah. or any, <laughs> and it was, it was a lot of that. I'm living paycheck to paycheck kind of stuff. And I was surrounded by relatives who are brilliant. Like these people are educated. They're resourceful. They ambitious. They know how to make a way out of no way, but yet they were, there was always a common narrative that I heard. And that narrative, Josie, it affected me in the early stages of my career because there was a, like a recorder playing in my head that I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'm working my fingers to the bone. That whole thing, that was a narrative that was playing in the back of my head. And so it impacted how much I could make. And so I think that the inner circle piece is important because now one of the things that I surround myself with is a group of friends where we can safely talk about our money journey, our money experience, our money mistakes, our money setbacks, and at the same time talk about our estate plan. Well, what does our will look like? What are we, have we established our trust yet? How much is our life insurance policy? You see, money has always been this really emotionally charged topic. It has a lot of, you know, for some people it has guilt in it. It has shame in it. It has all these emotions in it. And my thinking is I want to have that inner circle space where we can take all the emotion out of it and just talk about it without judgment. When you can do that with your inner circle, then guess what? your money situation starts to change for the better. And that's important because all of us want to have more than enough. We want to have enough to pay for our kids' college or pay off our house or take care of family members or support organizations and foundations and whatnot that we love. And it takes money to do that. So wouldn't it be great if we all had this beautiful, safe space? could talk about money without the emotion in a relaxed, non-judgmental environment and get information that we need so that we can all do better with money. It yes. makes a huge difference as opposed to those friends like, I got to rob Peter to pay Paul and, ooh, girl, I can't afford that. Like, no, we don't want it. So make sure you have at least two to three friends that you can sit with on a Zoom call or over brunch and after we kiki and talk about hair and fashion. Now let's talk about money. Yes, oh. and that's a topic, like you said, it's one that we don't even talk about. Like right now, talking about this on the show to some people, it's going to be even triggering. Just even listening to us talk about money, yeah. talk about our big vision. I always mm -hmm. talk about my inner $10 million Josie. Like it was a million dollar Josie last year. And this year it's like gone up. My vision is like $10 million Josie just walking limitless, right? Just walking Ooh. in this limitless pure bliss of life where I am just divinely guided to create, <laughs> to be, Ooh. right? I love that. Can, can you mind if I turn the table a little bit? Yes, I love it. Okay. So I'm curious to know more about that. What is, what does that look like for you? What are some of the things that come up as you envision yourself as the $10 million version of yourself? Impact. 
it's so much impact. I am on stages. I am speaking to these women about changing their identity to match the life that they want to create. I am creating bliss for myself and my family. I am walking in complete freedom. My life just feels like ease and calm and bliss and pleasure and joy and fun. It's just divinely guided is the word divinely. Everything is just in flow because I do not have to want for nothing. I'm fully supported in every aspect of my life, my career, my business, my home life, all of it just fully supported. And I know now better than I knew even last year that it is possible for me to walk in this way. And so I would love for you to talk to us about how we could create that for ourselves because I am working on that, not by myself. I have so many, like you said, that inner circle of women that this is my, this is like what I eat and breathe right now is talking about money, wealth, and abundance. Because I think the more we talk about it, as you said, the more we talk about our dreams and our goals and our visions, the more we light up. (laughs) Because this is what you're doing to me right now. The more you light (laughs) up, the more you get to create and manifest that dream that is no longer a dream because you're walking it you're breathing it you're being it you literally just gave me goosebumps from head to toe i'm not going to lie that is awesome because you know why josie nowhere in that description that you shared with us did you say anything about hard work or working from sun up to sundown you said nothing about fees or rates or you didn't say nothing about none of that you just talked about being mm-hmm. and lighting up the rooms that you enter and sharing this 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 message of yours from a place of pure bliss and joy you say nothing about working 40 50 60 hours a week nothing and i love that so much and my hope is that you are sharing more of that because that is the space where we need to live i think that is what i call that overflow lifestyle where you have more than enough and literally oh, i just took my coffee cup upstairs oh wait here it is my saucer is upstairs but let me just give you like a visual right so here's the coffee cup just so happens to be overflow i'm not trying to promote nothing i'm just it just so happens to be overflow on it please promote there's more than enough to go around (laughs) look at that right so imagine there's a saucer under this cup and imagine i am pouring water into my cup and it begins to overflow into the saucer underneath it i feel like we all have the potential to live from what's in the saucer what overflows into the saucer Mm -hmm. and the rest of this that's in here all these 15 ounces we can give and share and Mm -hmm. be generous with others and still not have to worry about anything because obviously what's in here is a lot more than what's in here or so it appears, right? (laughs) You look at it in the supernatural realm, it's different, but that's another show for another day. Anyway, so if we're living from here and we have more than enough of everything we need, not just money, but joy, love, compassion, all the things that we want, it's possible by doing exactly what you said. And that is, like I said earlier, allowing, and you said just now, which resonates with me, and that's just being and having the courage, these aren't your words, but I'm I'm adding this because I feel like it's the right place for it having the courage to walk in your purpose first of all to to figure out what your purpose is if you don't already know it right and then once you do figure it out embracing it and loving it and having gratitude for it and saying okay no matter what this looks like it may not look like what you know the girls are doing on instagram and it may not look like what the girl who has 21 million followers is doing but if this is my divine path i'm gonna have the courage to walk in it because when you walk in your purpose that's where your are profits lie. Your purpose and your profits reside at the same address. So as we do what you so beautifully, please go back and rewind and listen to what Josie said again, because it was perfect. As you operate it from that space of pure love and bliss and light and encouraging others and empowering others in whatever way you're put here to do so, you'll never have to worry about money. Yeah. And that's the dream and that's the goal and that's the mission. I know you said that's a talk for another day, the the realms, but really, (laughs) truly, I'm going to bring that here just a little bit. Are you sure you want to do that? Just a little bit. Because when I was living in the here and now and seeing my reality for what it is, right? We see that I don't have that $10 million lifestyle. I see that some days it is hard, right? Mm -hmm. What tends to happen is we go back to living the life that we're in, but we have to see it bigger. And the only way to see it bigger is to look past 
that's your reality. Yes. Yes. So I need you to talk a little bit about that because for some people that are going to listen to this, they're going to be like, what are you saying, Josie? I know (laughs) it can feel a little deep and, you know, it probably is. And so I'll, I'll simplify it even more, right? Because some people say, well, how do you see beyond what is like, you know, they can't get a hold of that, but here is one way that if you can't quite see beyond what is, can you simply do this? Here's the thing. Can you simply express gratitude for the thing that you desire before the thing shows up? Can you do that? Now, that's a little bit easier than seeing beyond what is, you know. So if we make it practical, can you simply be grateful for the thing that you desire before the thing shows up? I'm going to give you a personal example. Just a couple of years ago, my family and I, I I told you about the big transition and a lot of stuff going on in life. It was just a season of, of upheaval and learning for us. Right. So we faced a pretty big personal economic crisis in our family. And one Christmas, I believe it was 2020. Yeah, I think it was right in the midst of the pandemic. We had lost a large portion of our income because one of our main businesses had closed and so many things were happening. And I found myself in a position where I wasn't quite sure how I was going to make sure my son had something for Christmas under the tree. And it was that that triggered sadness about the overall state that we were in in that moment. It was difficult. Right. And I felt a little overwhelmed. I felt a little, oh, my God, what are we going to do type of a vibe. Right. And one day I woke up very early in the morning, probably around 5 a.m. before everybody got up. And I went into my prayer meditation time, which was, you know, common for me. I did do that every day. And in that time, I literally stood in the middle of the living room floor with no money in the bank, no real significant income at that point. And I stretched out my hands and I said, thank you. Thank you, God, that every need is met. We are out of debt. There is more in store for us. Thank you that everything is taken care of. Thank you that you have us in the palm of your hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right? There was no money, (laughs) if I'm being honest, right? So I did that. Now that is seeing beyond what you can see because I'm like, you thanking God for money, but there's no money. I mean, can we just be honest? And lo and behold, a miracle happened. Can I share with you what it was? Yes, please. A couple of days later, I went to the mailbox. It was a Christmas card from a good friend of ours. I opened up the card and it, and it was a, a Walmart gift card. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. She sent us a gift card. Perfect time. And I'm thinking it's going to be $25 or $50, right? And I'm like, oh, that'd be perfect. I, now I can finally get a little something, right? Lo and behold, I looked up the card to see how much was on it so that we could go do some Christmas food shopping. Girl, do you know it was a $500 gift card? <sighs> And I said, what? And that is just one of the things that can unfold. You, you, be, you start to see miracles. You start to see those reasons. Because I stretched out my hands and said, thank you. I told the universe, oh, she's saying thank you? Well, let me send her some stuff. Come on, stuff. And the resources that were needed in that moment began to show up. My son, around that same time, received a $10,000 scholarship. So I'm just telling you, like Josie said, see beyond what you can see don't rely on what the, this 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 realm that we can are looking at right now all around us these walls that you can touch that is just the surface there's so much more beyond that if you allow yourself to first start to become grateful for the thing before the thing shows up beautiful story that Ellis that paints the picture so beautifully that magic happens when you start to be thankful and in gratitude And one of my favorite affirmations right now is I am wealthy now. And then I ask myself, how do I know that? And then I start listing all the gorgeous things I have in my life, all the things that I wish for five years ago, 10 years ago, all the things I could have never imagined would be my life. And you can't help but to start feeling so full. Yes. Before you get the thing. So gratitude and appreciation, I definitely agree with you. Huge. If I can just add to that, I'm glad you mentioned that this idea of having a mantra, having things that you say out loud into your atmosphere, in addition to just being grateful, saying this is how you reprogram your mind, but saying those things that you want to have happen out loud, that as if they are happening right now, not this will happen, but I am wealthy. I don't worry about anything, or I'm probably not saying it right right now because it's off the top of my head, but saying things out loud as if they are right now, saying I am fill in the blank. I am 
healthy. I am filled with joy. I am right now. And you'll start to see things begin to change in your life. Yeah. Affirmations and mantras are so important because they light the way. Yes, they do. You can't, you can't see it right now, but if you start to do that, like you said, you'll start to see the miracles happen. That's and so much. how did you start to get to this place where you are able to not just talk about money, but be able to help others mm. to write new money story? Yeah, it's it's another good question. I have been on a very interesting money journey in my life and it is still unfolding. And I think the critical moment for me was about 19 years ago when I was in Chicago where I was a radio and TV host and I was, you know, Chicago is a pretty big market and I was, you know, getting a lot of accolades for my work in broadcasting and working really, really hard. And I love my job. It's still one of my favorite jobs to this day. But one thing always made me feel a little unfulfilled, I think, is the fact that my bank account didn't match my brilliance. I wasn't making the money that I felt that I was worthy of. So long story short, I began to have conversations with my managers and it was time to negotiate for a raise and set up the meeting and all was well. And I went into that meeting to negotiate the raise and I was immediately shut down and I was told that there's no money to give you a raise. And that moment in time caused two things to happen happen for me. Number one, it awakened something in me that said, I never want someone else to be able to dictate how much money I can make. I never want to be that person that for the rest of my life only receives two paychecks a month. Now there's nothing wrong with that. It just was something that I wanted something different for me. So that was the first thing that awakened in me. And then it also awakened a desire to really understand money because for many years, I thought that I wasn't making a lot of money because here I am an African-American woman from the South side of Chicago. I work at this itty bitty station. I don't know the right people. And it was all these external things and kind of pity party stuff in my head. But as I began to do research and discovery for years, I began to discover that the reason I wasn't making the money that I wanted is because of my mindset. And so solving the problem that I had wasn't about making more money or working more hours. It was about shifting my mindset. And the way you shift your mindset when it comes to money or anything is to rewrite the story. You heard me mention earlier that growing up, I heard this narrative about money, that it was always scarce. There was never enough of it. So part of the work that I had to do as an adult is to rewrite that story and to tell myself that there is no shortage of money in the world. Money is available everywhere and money that can come to me with ease and grace that I don't have to work 65 hours a week if I don't want to. That I can literally take five days off like I did just a couple of weeks ago and still see money coming into my accounts. Now it took a while to get there, but again, I had to rewrite the story that existed here and bring it up to match who I am today. I could no longer allow what that seven year old version of Monique dictate how I felt, thought and believed and behaved around money today. And so if there's anything that you want to have in your life and you want it to look different than it currently looks, don't try to literally go and change the thing. Do your work, your inner work, and ask yourself, what is my story around this thing? Whether, whether it's money, health, weight, relationships, what is the story that I'm telling myself and what aspect of that story needs to be changed? Yes, absolutely. I call this podcast Make Life Fun. And what I talk about is the inner game because how do we make life fun? We have to do the inner work. We have to have that inner transformation. And so with that scarcity mindset, a lot of people, I mean, we're brought up, like you said, the inner child is brought up hearing these stories. So is there some actions that people can take to start to rewrite these stories for themselves, aside from affirmations, but really to get to know even what that belief is, like yes. to get to that bottom line, because that's what you got to do. You got to go pretty deep. You can't just you stay on the do. surface. Yeah, you do have to, you, you do have to go deep. It definitely takes some, some effort to rewrite that story because a lot of times, again, we're going back to what we heard and learned about money as a six and seven year old and eight year old. And you have to go back and remember what your mother said or did, or your grandmother said or did, and you have to confront those stories and you may have to do some forgiveness work. You may have to forgive them, acknowledge that they did the best that they could probably acknowledge that they 
there was something that you learned from that, but now you're ready to, to have a different experience. And so forgiveness is a big piece. I talk about that a lot in my book, how to embrace your inner millionaire. And I actually walk people through like eight steps to help you get on the path to abundance. But confronting what the money story is, that's one of the first steps. Second piece is forgiveness. And then the third piece I would say is really taking an honest look at some of your current money habits and beliefs. One of the things I like to say is that money is flowing freely to four types of people. And that's people who respect it, people who understand it, people who are generous with it, and people who, I can't remember the fourth one. <laughs> This is what happens when you become of a certain age, but there are four steps. Anyway, it'll come to me in, in a second, but okay. So let's start with the first one. People who understand it, you must understand that there's no shortage of money in the world. That money is flowing freely, that we can make money with ease and grace. We can have passive income streams and all these things. And again, that you don't have to work 89,000 hours a week in order to make money. You just don't. People who respect it are those people that make sure that that money is, is organized. If you take your wallet or your purse, for instance, is your money, you know, crumpled up and all disorganized in your wallet? Is it just thrown into the purse along with the wrappers and the kids toys and all the other stuff we keep in there, right? Are the places where you keep your, your payables and your receivables, are those spaces organized? Are you making it a habit each week or a couple times a month to go through your online statements and to see if there are any, you know, charges, auto debits for subscriptions, gym memberships that you're not using or that you just don't need anymore? Or are they still taking that money out, basically creating a money leak for you? You know, you have to honor and respect your money because money cannot thrive in a chaotic environment. And I'm talking a physical environment and an energetic environment. We have to show some respect for the money and focus on it and make sure our habits are in, in line with like $10 million Josie's got to have some, some specific boundaries and structures and processes in place because $10 million, that's a lot, you know? So you want to have your bookkeepers and all these people that's helping you to be a good steward of that. And then money also flows freely to people who are generous with it. Some of the habits that I teach my clients are we always want to, whenever we receive our money, we want to take a percentage and give it, give it away to an organization or your church or whatever. We want to take a percentage and save it. And then we want to take a percentage, of course, and spend it. We don't want to become hoarders of money either because money is energy. It needs to flow. It's there to be used and to be spent. And so these are some of the things that we can do to rewrite that money story. Yes, absolutely. And those are some brilliant points that you made about how we could start to rewrite our stories because a lot of times, like you're saying, we are throwing money around. We have it here, we have it there. And, and then we're thinking, why don't we have more of it? Well, yeah, we got to respect our money. And so even yeah. something like that is such an eye-opener. It's such an aha. Right. If I could also add this, because because this is important. I felt this came up in my spirit, so I, I need to say it. It's important to have a money goal. As you said at the top of the show, you know, money can be a thing that makes us uncomfortable, especially as women, because we see how our male counterparts behave around money. And sometimes some of us may think that we have to behave around money in the same way. And we don't. And we have to honor our feelings and thoughts around money, right? But we also have to allow ourselves to have a vision for what we want to create. You so beautifully shared your vision with us, the $10 million vision. And some women may be, oh, that's so much. Why do you, what do you need with all that money? And like you said, it's triggering for some people. It's so important that you have that vision and that goal for yourself because that vision and that goal begins to dictate your actions and your habits. It begins to, that goal provides like a, like a North star. So you know how to conduct yourself in order to get there. So having a goal and a vision and writing it down and meditating on it and continuing to write about all the things that you're going to do as you are attracting $10 million into your life and your business. It's so beautiful. It's so fun to be on this money journey. I love it. Yes. Like that's the thing. Money can be fun. Like we get to make money fun. 
when we start to do the things that you've just brilliantly laid out for us on how we can start to even get better with writing our money story and creating less of a scarcity mindset and more of an abundant mindset. So before we jump into how you're serving and helping your clients, I would love for you to talk just a little bit about that abundance, like moving from, okay, now we have the scarcity. We know that we have these limiting beliefs. We know we have the scarcity mindset sometimes around money. Like how do we even, how do we go from that to I am abundant? Because sometimes that seems like such a yes. far jump. jump. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. And I think, I think one of the ways that we get there is we take it step by step. Money is kind of like, for lack of a better analogy, this may be bad, but money is kind of like an elephant. It's a, it's kind of a big thing. It can feel big and there's so many different layers and levels to it and so many things that we can you know, think about and talk about in order to get to where we want to go with our money. But I think one of the ways that we get to that space of abundance is just not being in such a rush to get there, just trusting our process. Mm -hmm. Everybody's process is different. And while some people may get to where they want to go in a year, it may take others five years. So honoring that process first and foremost. And I think also understanding, and this is another thing that I talk about in the book, understanding that first and foremost, it is an inside game. So allow yourself to go on this journey of your inner self first. It's not just about the bank account and the debits and the credits and the raising your fees and the charging what you're, it's not really about all of that. It's about on the inside, what am I feeling? And on the inside, what is my own definition of abundance? See, abundance don't always have to equate to money. During that time when, that I told you about where there wasn't a lot of money, I was still able to go look outside in my beautiful backyard garden and see coconut trees, mango mm -hmm. trees, avocado trees. I was, was growing pineapples in my backyard. Now, if that ain't abundance, I don't know what is. My son is healthy. That's another form of abundance. My husband is healthy. That's another form of abundance. I have this amazing, beautiful friend and family network. What did I do to deserve them? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that is another example of abundance. So seeing the abundance in all of its many forms, not just in terms of what's in your bank account, is another way that helps you move toward the actual abundance that, that we desire, which is in the bank account. You see what, yeah. does that make sense? Absolutely. So I think when we can honor all of those different forms of abundance, and again, let that gratitude kick in, then the actual dollars and cents, easy, because it will just begin to come almost effortlessly. Yep, that is one of my visions where it's ease, it's effortless, it's flowy, it's ever present. It's just, you don't even think about it you're just having fun about <laughs> it. here's another story about how when you get into that space how it happens i had finished a job for a client of mine and put a lot of effort into it because I wanted to and and just really put my heart in this thing. They had already paid the invoice, invoice, it was already paid in full. But you know what they did? About two weeks later, they came to me and they said, wow, this was amazing what you did. Can we give you a nice big juicy bonus? Yes, yes you can, absolutely. <laughs> Another example, one of the things that I do in my work is I'm a voice talent. So I do voiceovers for big brands and stuff like that. And last year, it may have been 2021, I did a voiceover for a client. <laughs> I'm a one and done girl. Once they pay me once, I'm good, I'm done. They reached out to me and said, hey, we wanted to renew that commercial you did for us and we paid you this amount. We wanna renew it. So can we pay you that amount plus 10% more to rerun the, the commercial? <laughs> It's like, sure you can. That is that abundance, that overflow, that energy that you have on the inside of, I am overflowing. Mm -hmm. I am overflow. I am worry-free when it comes to money. I am welcoming all the good that the universe wants to give to me or God in all of its forms, whether it's dollars, whether it's health, whether it's opportunities, mm -hmm. influence, favor, open doors, I am overflow. So welcoming it all of that and creating that energy space where the universe says yeah she's vibrating at that level of overflow so let's give her overflow yeah so good that just made me feel so good that story you just shared about how you just they were like throwing money at you oh, <laughs> like, and here i am with my baseball mitt hey thank you oh thank yes. you <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing with us what is possible thank you for sharing with us to be open to receiving and taking those baby steps to get there and i know you're serving your clients in a powerful way so i would love for you to share with us how you're doing that i would love for you to share with us where we can follow you and be a part of your work 
world. Oh, thank you so much. First of all, thank you for this beautiful platform you've created to allow me to just talk about all the stuff that we don't usually talk about when they interview me on the podcast. So thank you. This is beautiful. And I believe your future is so bright. You're just beginning. You're just getting started that you have no idea what's on the horizon for you. And it's happening sooner than you think. Get ready for big things to come your way, sis. I can see it for you. So thank you. And I am coaching and training overflow coaches. So all the juicy stuff that we talked about here today, I'm so excited because in this season of my business, I'm focusing on training other women who want to do this work and share this message. I'm training them on how to do that with others and grow a business as a coach, a certified coach at the same time. So that's what I'm working on. I'm working on book number two, and I'm working on really embracing that freedom and that overflow even more in my life and all the different ways that it's available to me. So my website is overflownow.com. And I also have a podcast called Sisternomics, where we talk about the nuts and bolts of money. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. And I always love to, I know we've talked about a lot today, but I always love to give you the floor. If there's anything that's on your heart that you feel like you haven't shared yet, we've shared a lot, but I know sometimes mm. there's something that touches your spirit and you're like, I got to tell these mamas this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I do want to say something to the mamas. I want to tell the mamas that you are doing a good job to give yourself grace on this motherhood journey. I mean, motherhood is truly one of the most important and amazing things that we get to do. And it's not always easy. Some days are really hard, but on those days that it's really hard, know that you're built for this. You're made for this. That baby chose you. Those children chose you as their mom and you are amazing. Give yourself grace, be patient with your process and know that Every seed that you're planting in your children, it is going to bear incredible fruit. Just be patient, love on yourself, take care of yourself, make time for yourself. Girl, don't be superwoman. Use your real superpower, and that is to ask for help when you need it. Good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. That conversation, right? Like we're talking money here on the Make Life Fun Show. We're talking about how we can be abundant without the effort, without the push more of a mm, flow, right? And so I love that conversation so much. And I hope that you did too. I would love for you to leave us a review or leave us a comment, come up in my DMs. I love to chat with you guys. And let me know what your favorite takeaway from this episode was today and what you're putting in a place like writing it down, putting in a place where you can visit it again, like get out your notebooks, right? <laughs> Listen again, if you need to, because there were some powerful nuggets in there that can do a big change and in, inner shift to start that transformation journey, especially when we're talking money. But what I want to do here is invite you to a powerful coaching container where I hold space, powerful space for you to go deeper, to find out what it is that's holding you back from creating more abundance to help you with a challenge that you're facing right now that isn't, you're not able to see the other side. You're just like in it. Like I want to be there for you and hold your hand as you see more possibilities, as you work your way through being stuck. If you go to backroadscoaching.com, go to the contacts, book a time to meet with me. It is completely free for right now. I will hold powerful space for you for an hour for us to get a game plan going so that you are able to start taking steps to whatever it is that you're creating right now. If you're going through a challenge, like my arms are open wide to receive you and help you through this journey that is life. We're not meant to do it alone. So say yes to receiving and come hang out with me for an hour. Lean in. <laughs> Have a beautiful rest of your day. I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time. Let me reintroduce myself and get honest with you. In 2020, I was motivated to change things up. The pandemic accelerated things that I was forced to close Josie Joe hair design after over a decade in business. I started my first podcast, Backroads, because I loved to travel and I loved 
the travel industry and also personal development that happens when you travel, especially as a solo traveler. I got burned out after winging it with my podcast for 21 episodes and doing everything on my own. And I love to teach and podcasting was still tugging at my heart. And I got inspired by motherhood and started the current podcast, Make Life Fun, that you're listening to today. And this show, Make Life Fun, was inspired by my journey of motherhood where I just did not feel like I was going to be the mother that I wanted to be. I thought it was just going to be a hard job. I thought it was just going to be 21 years, 18 years of this like hard knock life because I've heard from so many mamas and so many moms how hard motherhood is. And so when I came up with Make Life Fun, it was like, can we make it fun? (laughs) Can we make it easy? Is there a better way to do this? And that gave birth to this show today that we are over 70 episodes now. So over two years in my business, I still felt like I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like I loved what I was doing and I loved how I was showing up and the mindset piece was on point, but it still was not working. I had done a lot of deep diving and personal development work and still nothing, right? And so I have to find a different way. I had to find a different tool. I had to find a whole new tool box of tools. (laughs) And I realized that I wasn't in alignment with myself. I wasn't connected with my soul purpose. I wasn't, it wasn't a deep soul full body alignment. I was moving from my head space. I was moving from a place of this is what I should do instead of a heart led, soul led. This is what I'm doing because it feels so good. This is what I'm talking about because it lights me up. This is it. And when you move in that alignment and you're moving in that way of being pulled by your vision, it's a whole new way of being. And on the outside, I still looked shiny and happy. It looked like everything was working. It looked like I had everything together. And on the inside, I was completely having a totally different experience. I discovered that I had shut down parts of myself because I didn't feel safe. I've been called too much so many times in my childhood that I felt my power of that too much, I had to hide it. So that led me to feel trapped as a result of hiding that part of myself that is too much for some people who aren't my people. The too much part of me is who I am. The too much part of me is, it's the part of me that makes me come alive. The part of me that gets curious. The part of me that wants to push the envelope. The part of me that wants to be $10 million Josie. That is my too much. And I had to go back and embrace that part and reclaim that part of me fully. And that was a mission (laughs) and a mountain that needed to be moved. And so it was a deep diving journey for the last eight months that I've been on. And the results so far that I've experienced from this deep dive is that my husband's gotten a raise and he's 2X his income. I'm a published author and an international bestseller. I'm showing up in my business like a boss, like a CEO, like a person who is completely in charge. and completely owning the space that I'm in. I'm owning what I do. I'm owning how I do it. I am owning my authentic self, my authentic voice. I'm connecting to my whole integrated self. I welcomed all of me here. I am so in love with all of me (laughs) and all of that. I have found all the parts of Josie that were criticized and beat down, the parts that were called too much, too sensitive. Those parts of me are here now and held, loved cherished. And I am more than anything following my soul calling. I am saying what I want to say. I am doing what I want to do. And I am lighting up day after day, serving in this way. And what I want for you is to experience results like this. I want you to feel lit up. I want you to feel so in love with yourself, so in love with your life. I want you to be walking your soul purpose. And I have openings that I've opened up for my powerful coaching experience. And I would love to invite you in to a powerful container where I am holding powerful space for you to experience the transformation for yourself, to experience what it is like to be moving in alignment, moving connected. And together we have a 60 minute session, this free 60 minute session with me. You're going to get clear on your soul aligned vision. We're going to dive deep and we're going to discover what is stopping you and blocking you. What is in your way? What is it that you can't see right now? And we're going to create a plan so you can take the next best step that has you taking powerful, aligned, soul-aligned action that will have you creating your vision with greater ease because there's a difference from forcing and pushing versus alignment and flow. And I want to help you get into alignment and flow. And whatever it is that you're creating right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whether it is you're feeling like you need more self-love or you're feeling like you need help with your parenting, your motherhood, motherhood is hard. 
Whatever it is in your life right now that you feel is a challenge, I can hold space for you to look at it differently and create a plan that helps you break through that. So you know where to find me, backrosecoaching.com. Go to the contact page and you can go ahead and book yourself a free 60 minute session where I promise you it is going to be all about you. This is for you to share and for me to listen and hold the space that you need to find the answer that is already deep within you. So I invite you in. I, t- I will talk to you soon. And thank you for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for all the times that you have reached out to me and told me what you're liking about the show and giving me your feedback because they matter to me. I created this for you, mama, for you to gain wisdom, encouragement, and for you to feel like you're not alone. So have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next time. 